did you even I just mods in way. I don't know if you can hear the uh, music playing behind us because there's a fan on this side, a fan going on that side, and I forgot to turn that one back on when I got home. So, modern fan, fan from the AC, antique fan that is not currently on, so, you know, no rhythmic thumping from <laughs> on top of my, uh, my curio cabinet. So, I went to the post office today. I don't usually go on Saturdays. Oh gosh, well first off, uh, I don't usually go on Saturdays because the, uh, the post office I go to, which is where my mailbox is, uh, that is only open until 2 in the afternoon on Saturdays. And I'm usually up at noon and then in bed at 4 a.m. And uh, because of the way the bus runs, it's about 35 to 40 minutes between my place and downtown Ann Arbor, where my post office is. And my whole morning routine takes in the area of two hours itself and I only have like and I would only have like under normal circumstances maybe an hour and 15 maybe to an hour and 20 minutes on a on a good day I guess get there in time for you know just before the post office closes so I don't usually go on Saturdays but I had the damnedest time trying to get to sleep last night and I ended up sleeping um, in like two, like, three and a half, maybe three hour shifts, let's see, I slept, I accidentally fell asleep on the floor in the front room, because I was laying on the floor for my back pain, that sometimes helps, not especially often, but it was last night, obviously, since I was able to fall asleep without intending to, and that was a little under three and a half hours by my estimate, then I fed the cats and went to bed. They're wet food. I went to bed and um, I slept maybe another three hours. By the time I woke up, it was like 10.30. It's just too hot to get a full night's sleep all in a row. And unfortunately, I cannot afford to run the air conditioner all day. I have it on an economy setting, which means you know it tries to maintain a temperature on of about 77 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, but that only does so much. Like, it'll, it'll go, like, for between 30 seconds to 10 minutes, um, at intervals when it starts to sense that the temperature is getting significantly, you know, over 77. Um, and one of the weirdest things is the way that this unit is designed. Um, I don't have the greatest air circulation into the front room from the AC. There are no doors between the front room and my bedroom. Um, when I'm done cleaning, for, I will uh, do an apartment tour video. But yeah, um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, just like through the power of Midwestern summers, especially in the Great Lakes region, uh, where it is hot and humid and actually it's not as bad as when I was uh, growing up in Toledo when like we basically had to have an air conditioner because most of Toledo is developed swamp land and in fact like one of the early names pitched for the city of Toledo was Frog Town and there are still like a couple old businesses in the area called Frog Town whatever and such so uh, but yeah, I was awake early enough, so I figured, sure, why not head off to the post office, since I have plenty of time today. And I got this one package here, and then this big package here, and I'm pretty sure I know what this one is. So let's open this one first. Uh, these are almost certainly uh, birthday presents, and hopefully I will be able to find out who sent what to... Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh my gosh. These are the first two Adventure Time uh, co graphic novel collections. These are different sizes. That is that is going to bother me for a little bit. <laughs> I like my I like my editions of series to match. In fact, I have read I've read Colin McInnes' City of Spades like three times, but. I, uh, I, I keep my eye on the lookout for a specific edition that goes with my other two 
books in that series. So, <laughs> that was like one of my auto searches on eBay. I'm like, no, please, I have to have the edition that matches, and then I'll get rid of this other one. Adventure Time, Volume 1, and Adventure Time, Original Graphic Novel, Volume 2. So, wait, are these two different kinds of things? I'm not sure. I'll figure it out. This is also from Dark Horse. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You obviously love graphic novels and comics at least as much as I do. A new all-ages classic, says MTV Geek. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm just like, the, the, the whole concept of an MTV Geek, because I'm an old person, so I'm like, what the hell? That is, those are two terms that do not go together. Oh my gosh. I'm, yes, I'm definitely going to have to read and review these. I have to find out if this is like two different series or something, because... No, we've got... Huh. I don't know. I'll figure it out, because we've got one and two on the spines there, so I'll figure it out. Because if it's two different editions, I'm like, I'm not going to say no, because it was gifts, uh, and it's just, eventually, I will want to find, like, an edition that editions that match. I don't, I don't know. It's just one of those, like, it's not, it's not OCD as it will not ruin my life, nor will it, like, drain my bank account because I have at least some sense about money. Um, sometimes, like, last month, which is why I was broke, um, with my little spree on bidding on table lighters, sometimes I'll just, like, spend a little bit more than I know I should because... I am feeling sorry for myself, but um, thankfully I don't see myself like going down an addictive path with shopping just because I'm like, come on, I have cats to feed. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is. I can see this. Oh my gosh. And we've got the notes. And now we have a box to take to the recycling station. There's something else I did today. And this is from Cherry Berry 6848. I don't remember, but it ends in 8. This is a Nantucket Bicycle Company basket. And these are gorgeous bicycle baskets. So, let's see. This can go with the plastic bag recycling. So, see, these are such beautiful baskets. And it's not especially big, I know that. But it looks bigger in my hands because I'm only 4 foot 11. True, that's like one of the perks of being four foot eleven. Is <laughs> I joke that that's why so many of my ex boyfriends have been well over six feet tall. <laughs> that they have these like fantasies about being some kind of giants, and with me being four foot eleven, <laughs> somebody who put these straps on did a really silly job of it. Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. So, the reason I'm playing Lee Morse music in the back is not only is she one of my favorite singers, um, best known for her recordings in the 20s and 30s, um, I, one of my ways I supplement my own income is as a street musician, and every summer, usually the first weekend in July, but it looks like this year is going to be the second weekend, second Friday, um, Downtown Ann Arbor is going to be the Rolling Sculpture Car Show, where um, a lot of people have their antique uh, uh, cars. As far as cars go, is generally considered to be anything over, definitely over 50 years old. I want to say 40 years old is considered an antique car, or at least that's the kind of, at least that's going by insurance um, adjustments. I suppose. I've never owned a car, so I don't know what they call the insurance tiers. But um, but yeah, like uh, as far as insurance goes, uh, they consider a car an antique. Definitely if it's over 50, possibly if it's over 40. Definitely a lot of antique cars, you know, by the uh, the standards of insurance, def you know, um, premiums, whatever. And I. Uh, the last few years, I've gone out to that as a street musician. Like, this is one of the few times of the year in Ann Arbor where uh, the, uh, the the local cops won't ride your ass for 
um, being a street musician without a permit. Now, there are some areas of downtown Ann Arbor where you can kind of get away with that anyway, and nobody cares, but uh, during art fair, they want you to have a permit unless you are specified as being a guest of whatever um, shop or um, artist, which I have gotten a talking to from art fair security on a number of occasions, no matter what the hell I'm playing. <laughs> You're like, even when I have, like, even last year, I was, like, I had my jeweler, like, confirm that I was, you know, a guest of, you know, theirs, but the, uh, the store manager, she was very busy with something else, and it was, like, only one of the, uh, the sales girls there that, um, was kind of backing me up, and so it's like, well, fine, gotta take my harmonium now and just, like, whinge about art fair on... You know, to Facebook and all of that. But now that I've got a substantial viewership, I can whinge about art fair on the YouTubes, right? So Rolling Sculpture Car Show, they have a lot of people with antique cars, and I am talking like antique, antique. Um, so like, as far as antique furniture goes, um, most stuff, especially if you go to like an old fashioned kind of like old school dealer, like, uh, like my stepmother and I were when she was like moonlighting with that on the side, because she was a social worker, they barely make ends meet on that alone. But yeah, she also like sold eggs at farmer's market, having a few chickens, and would um, sell antiques, which she started doing with her first husband, but that's another story for another time. So yeah, antique furniture, um, minimum age, some stuff 75 years, but most of it, um, if it's being called antique, we're going to be looking at a um, hundred years or more. Granite, you've been seeing, uh, I've been seeing a lot more stuff from the mid-60s in um, antique stores lately, and honestly, that's just because that's what a lot of people are interested in, whether it's like something that would indeed be considered antique when like, you know, like looking up and like, uh, like trying to insure it or not. Not counting bookcases, most of my front room furniture is definitely antique. I'm not so sure about the wicker chair, but that's another story for another time. So, uh, so yeah, uh, one of my favorite cars that I like to go, like, that I like to hang out by while I'm busking is the, uh, so the owner has two, um, um, Detroit Electrics, and that is like the, the, the maker and model was the Detroit Electric Car Company. One is 1916, one is 1917. And this is the funny thing, before 1930, about, you know, uh, um, up to, two, depending on where you lived, like between one and two thirds of the cars on the road were electric at that time. And then what happened was, uh, was the war, and I don't remember the intricacies of this, but for some asinine reason, petrol motors. Um, gasoline motors, gasoline engines, and you know, those like took off. And I want to say it was due to marketing campaigns, mostly for because that was like the gold. You know, um, Ford, I think Oldsmobile, which was originally based in Lansing, and so I, I, I picked up a bit of that local history. I want to say Oldsmobile was involved in, in really in like these massive advertising pushes for um, for gasoline engine cars so um, so then what happens so I like to hang out by the Detroit electric uh, just because like I've just gotten friendly with the owner of that over the years I've been going out and busking usually singing like old songs from the approximately 1915 to 1932 uh, I stick to a lot of stuff by eh, I want to say more mid you know, like 35, 36 maybe, just because I, I like a lot of Lee Moore songs, I like a lot of Gus Kahn songs. Um, he wrote, if you don't think, if you haven't heard of Gus Kahn either, because I know most of my viewers have probably not heard of Lee Moore's, but uh, go to uh, the Lee Moore's discography, that is the YouTube name, and uh, she's wonderful, she's a wonderful singer. She wrote about, she wrote at least a good third of her own material. Other stuff was, you know, just like popular enough or stuff that she helped make popular from other writers. But Gus Kahn, if you don't know the name, you've definitely heard some of his songs, uh, like um, 
uh, Dream a Little Dream of Me, um, you know, one of the more famous versions by uh, Cass Elliot, or, uh, you know, the Mamas and the Papas. Um, Making Whoopi, that's been in a lot of movies. Uh, uh, brain farting on other famous Gus Kahn songs right now. He was one of the big Tin Pan Alley songwriters, which, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was um, the, um, the, like, the vaudeville songwriting um, circuit was uh, considered, like, uh, to be, uh, like, Tin Pan Alley. I think Hell's Kitchen, New York. Um, but, yeah, it's just... I think Lee might have sung a Gus Kong song or two. Um, not sure. Not sure. I'll have to look that up. But, yeah, like, those are, uh, and I do sing from other people as well. I'm going to be uh, going out with my accordion, uh, probably doing some vintage 20s drag, uh, which means I probably have to find a burgundy lipstick, because that's, um, that's a bit more period appropriate. So, yeah, if you are or are planning to be in the Ann Arbor area on Friday, the 12th of July, 2019, just in case you come upon this years after the fact, um, yeah, uh, go find the, uh, the 1916, 1917. He rotates them every year. So, like, he'll bring the 1916 one one year, then the next year the 1917 one, and then, like, rotate like that. Um, alternate, I suppose. Uh, one is red, one is blue. Please don't ask me which one is which, because I don't remember. I just know that I have business cards for, that have a picture of one of each on them from him. And, uh, and yeah, if you want to take some pictures of, you know, like, yourself with me in an antique car, or maybe get some candid video of the tiniest drag queen who performs barefoot because he's physically incapable of walking in heels, and there's a story about that. Uh, so yeah, now that I've run my mouth off for a hot minute and then some, I I love this basket. Thank you so much, Cherry Berry. This is gorgeous. And oh my gosh, we've got one of those little um, plastic things over the front of this. I'll see how long it takes to rub off on its own because it's really hard for me to hold my phone and mess around with things. Um, I'm going to go put this on my bicycle and then go uh, get a little bit, get, get, just get a quick clip of it. Uh... Uh, so, uh, this is the basket on the bike. I know a lot of people have the basket turned around to the front, but... Um, I've got my, uh, my reflector here, and I cannot move that like I thought I did when I was trying this out with uh, one of the ones that was at the store at the bike shop out on uh, Washtenaw Ave, and plus there's my headlamp here, so we don't want those covered up. So yeah, this is this is the correct way that I had it. Oh, there's some Oh my gosh. But still I think uh I don't know. I might <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll decorate it or just leave it as is because it goes so nice with the blue. And yes, you heard right, I've got some old school um plus there's the rear blinker. Yeah, I've got some old school ready to glare stuff going on with neighbors being far louder than anybody needs to be. Oh my gosh. Again, thanks so much. And hopefully I'm going to have an excellent birthday come the 22nd. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> thanks for everybody who was okay with listening to me ramble on about, um, about, um, busking, uh, this coming Friday. Okay, so it will fit a bunch of books, and it's got some room up here, plus, let's see, we've got my malt vinegar that I put on my potatoes, because, don't judge me, that's why, um, so obviously that, that can't happen, because that will, uh, yeah, um, plus we've got the, uh, the, the shaving cream that I haven't taken into the bathroom yet, we've got my Trader Joe's flour, Flyer, not flower. Got a sketchbook. Um, this one is a little too wide to go in here properly. 
and now it's acting like it will. Uh, whatever. I'm, that's no. I uh, gotta think. Oh, please, please don't pop open. Ah, I should have taped this. Okay, so we've got a box of safety pins, some of which have already decided to fall out on me because I was a dumbass who did not tape it shut like I should have. Um, so, yeah, that actually... Oh, dear. So, yeah, like, there we go. That actually holds a decent amount. Uh, oh, my gosh, this is so beautiful. So, yeah, it's like, it can't hold a, uh... So, yeah, it... You know, it definitely, um, it, it could hold a small bag of groceries, um, and, yeah, it can hold a small bag of groceries, all right, uh, if I get the, uh, if I get at least one of the, um, um, back rack baskets, you know, the ones that clip onto the back rack, which are also in my wish list, those are, oh gosh, last I looked, I want to say those are at least $65 each, because, to, uh, to maximize the, um, 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 the, uh, the, the carrying capacity on the, uh, on the back rack of my, of my bicycle. Two would be ideal, but I, I'm really not expecting anybody to buy me those because they're about $65 each, and as you see, Nantucket Basket Company does not make the biggest baskets, but they make some of the prettiest, and I will admit, that is that is what I, I'm looking for because I while I do need to do some uh, some some restoration cleaning on my bicycle uh, I you know I still I want it to look pretty and all of that so yeah and I'm wondering what the hell is up with this here like this this looks a little bit it looks a little bit dusty I really hope nothing is wrong with the wicker. Uh, uh, it almost looks like soap scum, you know, but, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm not expecting anybody to get me the, uh, the baskets for the back, but, you know, if you want to get me an Amazon gift card or something, I, I can, I, I will probably put it towards at least one of those, so yeah, this is, this is so nice. So yeah, I definitely can't do a big grocery shopping with this, but if I'm just going out for a couple of things, this is fine. This is more than fine. Um, yeah, it, it, hold, it it's, it's a little on the deceptive side. It holds a bit more than I th thought it would at first, so that's nice. Still doesn't hold as much as a lot of bicycle baskets I've seen, which, you know, but still, you know, I, I, I like that it's pretty. I like that it's pretty, and I'm gonna, I'm probably going to put some kind of floral stuff on it, just because I'm a dork. I'm an old, in addition to a loudmouth with internet access, I'm also an aging Nancy boy past his prime. So, again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you both so much. This is, oh my gosh, this is, this is actually kind of, <laughs> this has some heft to it when it's got, when it's full of books, but, and again, it's full of books, and my, uh, and my malt vinegar, <laughs> and my shaping, and now safe, and now, like, small safety pins that have thoroughly, uh, okay, not especially, oh my gosh, so this is what I'm doing tonight is picking safety pins out of wicker. I'm sure I could deputize him now to do this for me. He, he loves safety pins. I don't get it. He's punk rock. Like, <laughs> that's my joke around here anyway. It's like, my cat is so punk rock. We're now is so old school death rock that he will just like sit there and pick safety pins out of whatever. And Nigel is so goth and yeah, like so, so gothic that he will, he will eat every rose I've ever had, and the, th the thorns are no deterrent for him. But again, thank you, thank you so much. I, I'm re I really do appreciate this. This is such a beautiful thing, and honestly, even, even just this one, and honestly, like, uh, until this summer, I wasn't even sure I could still ride my bicycle. Um, the last time I took it out was just before my surgery, 
uh, which was in 2017, and um, well, I did use it for a bit until my surgery. It was like that uh, that that for I, I sprained my knee really badly, like falling off that bike. Um, like I went to go make a turn, and I had turned a little bit too sharp, or something. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of break um, chalking it up to being my fault, but I hit one of those little. Um, water pipes that juts out like right near the uh, the, the sidewalk sometimes you see those um, what, usually when you're past a residential area just to give you an idea about where I, you know like how much riding I do on my bike um, but yeah then what happened is like I hit one of those instead of like turning toward the crosswalk like I wanted to like just so I could get out onto the bike lane because I don't take the bike lanes on the street if they're well I don't take the street unless there's a bike lane and thankfully in Washtenaw County, I am not obligated to take the street unless there's a bike lane. So, um, that's because I do not trust these drivers. I don't. Like, half the people in this area jaywalk. More than half the people in this area jaywalk over nothing. And I'm just like, no, I don't trust these people. Actually, I didn't take my bike out at all last year because, um, well, so I was healing up from my surgery about the first half of 2017 summer. So, I literally could not go on my bicycle. <laughs> like, um, and then Isaac was coming over, and he didn't have a bike, and then, like, the, the rest of the summer, Isaac was over a lot, and he didn't, didn't have a bicycle of his own, so I felt like I would be a jackass if I was taking my bicycle out, with, you know, to go out, you know, with him to, like, the Dairy Queen or go ice cream, um, in downtown. A couple times, go was close, so we just, like, took a trek up to the Dairy Queen instead. Which is a bit of a mile walk, but still, it's like, I don't know, I feel like a jackass taking out the, uh, the bicycle while he's walking. And then, it, and then it got really abruptly cold that autumn, and I'd noticed that the tires were deflating, and I was just like, okay, well, it's gonna be work to take it out anyway, with the, uh, with the tires deflating, um, like they were, t like, toward, like, we had a couple suddenly decent enough days, but I was just like, eh, whatever. So, m all of last summer, the tires were deflated. Well, first off, first half of last summer, Isaac was still around, though I knew that this was ending in flames, and I saw it, like, I saw it happening, like, just before, con uh, no, I want to say, I, it was totally happening, like, yeah, yeah, just before convergence. It was totally happening just before convergence, whatever, but, uh, yeah, and, um, and then what happened was, uh, was, yeah, I just, I don't know, I just got into this depression hole, and I was just not feeling up to taking my bicycle out, and, um, and, like, reinflating the tires, see, and then that's the other thing, after he left, and I was feeling like, maybe I should take out my bike, I was just like, uh, what if I need to replace the tires, so, earlier this summer, like, I want to say mid-May, I finally took my bike out, just to see if the tires needed to be, like, if they just needed to be reinflated, or if I needed to replace the tires. Thankfully, I did not need to replace the tires because um, the, the wheels on that are a little bit smaller than most adult bicycle tires are, though that is an adult-sized bicycle. Yes, it's a quote-unquote ladies' style, but honestly, those are the only bicycles I can ride. I'm 4 foot 11. I'm 4 foot 11. I'm under 5 feet tall. I cannot ride a grown man's bicycle and I'm not going to ride a little boy's bicycle with, like, Ninja Turtle shit all over it. They still make those? Showing my age again. But, yeah, I'm not going to ride a little boy's bicycle. First off, I, I know what people think when they see a, a grown man going into the, the, the kids' section for bicycles. They're, they're thinking, like, even if he's, you know, like, borderline pygmy like myself, uh, I'm like, nope, nope, not going to happen. Uh, so, yeah, I'm like, I don't care, I wear ladies' jeans because I hate hemming denim, and I hate that ragged edge on the cuffs of my jeans, so, nope, screw that, not getting grown men's jeans because I hate hemming denim. Um, so, yeah, it's like, my, my, my dick's not gonna shrink wearing ladies' jeans, you know, that's definitely, you know, not gonna happen. <laughs> Hung like a crazin' anyway, so... If ladies' jeans aren't going to shrink my tiny endowment, then ladies' bicycle definitely won't. And plus it's gorgeous, and it's the same color as my front room. 
except for this couch. I really need to reupholster this couch. Yes, again, thank you so much, and thanks for listening to me ramble on like a dipshit, like I tend to anyway. Um, but yeah, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I love this, and I'm going to love these Adventure Time graphic graphics, and I definitely, oh my gosh, I, let's see, what do I want to, um, I think after I... Definitely after I shoot the review for uh, Student of Kaimi, which is probably going to be um, um, just before I finish uh, the Paragenesis collection, I think I'm going to take a little break from Raythu stuff, and I don't know, do I want to read Stitch, or do I want to read an Adventure Time collection? I don't know. I'll, I'll read one of them. I'll read one of them, do maybe a quick you know, review, because it's graphic, like, you know, there's, there's a lot less text to absorb, so, oh my gosh, again, thank you, thank you so much, thank you both so much, this would be Cherryberry48, and, uh, and, yes, Dark Horse again, thanks so much, I'm, oh my gosh, I'm so happy, I have a beautiful basket from my bicycle, my beautiful bicycle, it is gorgeous, and I have a story about how I even got it, and you would not believe it. But, th as I tend to say, that's another story for another time. And because you're probably one of the, um, 980-some-odd people who are already subscribed, you probably know that there will always be another story at another time. Sometimes it takes me a while to get to it, but it does always happen again. Bats and kisses, and take care of yourselves, and slan!